Hey guys, so now what we're going to look at is using code libraries. Um, it's going to be a short video. We're going to see basically how do you add a library, how to use specific functions, and two quick examples of using a library called jQuery and another one called AOS. So first and foremost, what is a library? Um, a library is basically a piece of code, like a JavaScript file, essentially, um, which someone else has written for you and which does a certain amount of things and then allows you to use those things. So for instance, um, there are some tasks that you don't want to repeat, like figuring out the code for whenever you scroll past a certain point, then I want to have an object, that, an HTML element that appears and sort of fades in. Um, and that might be something that everybody wants or a lot of people want, and it might take like 50, 100 lines of code to do it. Um, and then one day some person just decided to write all these lines of code in a way that is modular enough that everybody can, do, can use it, and then put it online, write the documentation, and then we can download it, and we can use this functionality by just using one line of code saying like scroll to fade or fade to scroll, rather than having to reread, uh, rewrite all those like fi um, 50 to 100 lines of code. So that's what a library is. Little package that we import and then allows us to do more things than just with regular JavaScript. So the first one that we're going to use is this library called jQuery. And how do we add it? Basically, what do we want to end up with? We want to end up with something here in our head tag that has a script. Oops. That is going to be where I put my library. Here I already have the AOS. But let's go through the steps of, of adding jQuery. So I'm going to Google jQuery and then see what happens. What do we get? Um, huh, there's download. Download sounds good. Um, and then download compressed, uncompressed, map. What? What are all these things? So usually when you download libraries, they're sort of like optimized to be as small as possible. Um, so you have different versions. You have like the compressed, which is our minified, which is basically a library that has been zipped with like minimum, like no spaces, no line breaks, no nothing. Um, it's not readable code, but it's functional code. And then you have the uncompressed, which is which keeps the spaces, keeps the long variable names, long function names. Um, it weighs more in terms of kilobytes, um, but it's more readable. I'm going to go ahead and use the compressed production jQuery. So I click on this and then see how this looks like. It's just like E I C D H E, like completely unreadable. But I can save it as a JavaScript, put it in there, and then save it inside my folder. So now I open Atom and I have jQuery that's present here. All that I have to do then is include it by saying script src equals and this guy is going to be called jQuery dash 3.5.1.min.js. It's funny how we can switch between point and dot, whether it's interspersing numbers or words. Anyways, that's a digression. So now we've included jQuery. This is going to allow us to use jQuery specific functionalities. One of those is basically jQuery jQuery is a way to write JavaScript in less lines of code. So a lot of the things that you guys are going to like write over and over, like document .add a, um, add a, add event listener, document .get element by ID, all these things, like you end up repeating, repeating, and repeating, and repeating yourself. And programmers are very lazy people who don't want to repeat yourself themselves. And so jQuery basically just like takes, it does everything that JavaScript can do. It just makes it shorter and nicer to write. Um, it used to be hugely popular and now a little bit less with like the rise of like front-end frameworks like React or, or Vue. The way jQuery works, and I'm going to write it in my script.js, is that it has this thing. And this is sort of like the jQuery default um, selector. And it's kind of document.getElementById and it figures out whether we're using like an ID, whether we're using a class, or whether we're just using like a regular element. 
So let's add a click um, event on our first div with the ID start. So I'm going to say select with hashtag start because it's kind of the same selector as them um, as CSS. And then I'm just going to say click equals and then I'm going to add a function. And what happens um, when we click? And then I'm going to like add some text inside. So similarly, hashtag start dot text. And then I'm going to say, you have clicked. I'm going to save it. I'm going to load my index.html, refresh it. And when I click, nothing happens. What went wrong? Let's see if it is inside. There's no text inside. There's nothing. So something might have been might have gone wrong. Usually, what happens when you use um, libraries is that you end up looking up their documentation. And so we're going to Google it. We're going to say jQuery um, change text inside element. It seems like a reasonable search. And how to change the text value within an element? OK. We open this particular website, and it looks like, yeah, post red dot text. So maybe what I did wrong was the click part. So I'm going to Google again, and I'm going to say jQuery add click event handler. Oh. Yep, and now I get the documentation. And I see that what I did wrong is that these guys are here. They're parentheses. It's not like a an equal the way I used it. It's like click and then function and then this thing. So I'm going to do click. Open the parentheses. Put my function and then close the parentheses. I'm going to go back to libraries demo. Refresh it. Click. Oh, and the text is here. Beautiful. Okay, there are other things we can do, such as dot start, hide, right? Instead of saying dot style dot display equals none, we can just say hide, refresh, click, and it's gone. Beautiful, right? So these are the two examples of how you can use JavaScript to make um, your life a little bit easier. The reason uh, jQuery to make your life a little bit easier. The reason we're not using jQuery immediately in this class is because you need to know what is going on inside JavaScript in order to understand why we need to abstract it. Like you need to know the rules first in order to break them. Not that jQuery is breaking any rules. Um, I don't think so at least. Another example is this library called AOS. Animate on scroll. And this is what it does. Scroll down, and it shows you if you have a div with fade up, it fades up, fade down, right, left, up right, up left, down right, down left, flip. All these things. Okay, and we scroll down, we see bonanza, anchor placement, a lot of options. And then it tells us, yep, you can do that. So we could um, just get it and download it and add it the same way. Or we can use something called a CDN. And a CDN is a content delivery network. And it's basically a URL at which we're going to fetch the necessary files. So instead of having like just aos.js here, we're going to have the whole URL. And I've already copied and pasted these two links. And I add them inside my index.html. And these guys are just here. Okay. And so now, similarly as in the documentation, I've added those data.aos-aos -aos, um, attributes to each of those divs. And the last thing that I need to do is initialize AOS. So in the script, I need to say aos.init. I'm going to go to my script.js, and I'm going to say aos.init. All I need to do. 
let's see how it goes. Close this and refresh. Oh, it appeared. Scroll down, it appeared some more. Left. And all these guys smoothly appear. No work need to be done except writing aos.init, adding those particular um, attributes in my div, and adding the required scripts and uh, CSS files. It's pretty useful. So this video is not exactly about showing you how to do something very specific with a library. It's to show you what's the process of going through a library. So you have to download it, either you download it locally and then you link it like this, or you get it from a CDN, so you get a whole URL, and then you have to follow the documentation to figure out how exactly you should be doing it, right? Adding those attributes, writing your event listeners like this, and doing an init, init is a shorthand for initialization for a particular library. So as we're gonna go through the class and we start using like the YouTube library or the Vimeo library or other sound libraries, it's always gonna be the same process of finding the website, downloading it, linking it into our HTML file, and then writing JavaScript the way that the original writers wanted us to use JavaScript.